The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. As a small biz grow, I saw we roll. Using procurement, program, and control. As a small biz grow, I saw we grow. Using procurement, program, and control. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Business Zone with Crystal Gilbert and Don. Uh, neither one of them are here right now. Gilbert's on his way, and uh, it is Friday, February eighth. We're second week into Black History Month, and I've been having a great month, have some great classes. The digital marketing classes is going on fantastic, and it's Black History Month, so I'm really excited about that. You know, I actually prefer, um, I look at uh, Black History Month being all year round, um, but, you know, if they're going to give us a month to actually celebrate us and it's all highlighted on us, I'll take it. I'll take it. So today we're going to, uh, we got some phenomenal guests coming into the studio today. I have Mr. Michael Larson from the CEO and president of the Los Angeles Urban League. And I have Ms. Sean White, who is a corporate attorney. And we're going to talk about Black History Month and the economic um status of the black community and what we need to do to to make our community that much better and and really get us moving um excited about that uh you know i we're at a place right now where it's about us and and about nobody else we got to take care of ourselves so i um so we just got to do what we got to do and we got to start connect, coming together to do that and not waiting for someone else to do that uh, but while we're waiting for gilbert to come in I want to do some highlights on um, Black History, Black History Month. And so as of last week, I did uh, highlighting our women who've done our first, who've done some things and broke some barriers and, and just became the first women, and they were pretty powerful. So today, we're focusing on those uh, individuals that were black innovators and inventors. And some of them I didn't even know about. And I think I'm pretty good at research, but you know, some of them are, you know, there's, we've done so much in our history has been hidden from us for so long. And thank God for the internet. Cause the internet has brought all our stuff right there and open. That was probably the worst thing they could have done was created the internet and allowed us to have access to it. Cause now our people are waking up and they're learning new things about themselves and hopefully it's empowering them uh, to go out and do some fantastic things on their own, recognizing that we did not begin when they stole us and brought us to the United States and to America. That's not where we began. We began way before that time. But we're going to talk about the ones that actually helped make America great and uh, some of this stuff I didn't know. I It was actually kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of it is actually pretty interesting. So we're going to, I've discovered 14, or I found information on 14 black innovators and in, in, um, um, inventors that created some stuff that you and I use every single day. And who knew that this was created by black people? But I'm so proud of our people because we are very, very talented, very skilled, and uh, they just told us that we weren't, but we really are. So the very first one up is Dr. Shirley Jackson. She's an American physicist, and she received her Ph.D. from Massachusetts Institute. Institute of Technology in 1973. She was the first African-American woman to earn a doctorate in nuclear physics at MIT. And in addition to her length of academic achievements, she also has impressive uh, has an impressive number of inventions under her belt. So one of the things that she invented uh, was she paved the way for numerous developments in telecommunication space, including the touch tone telephone, the portable fax, caller ID, 
call waiting and fiber optics cable. And today, Dr. Jackson is the 18th president of Ren Lensler Polytechnology Institute in Troy, New York. So our guest actually may know of that because um, she was out of New York. Um, our next inventor is Mr. Louis Latimer. And Louis, he is a inventor. He ate his, he was born in 1848 and died in 1928. And his development and what he did, he was an inventor and draftman. Thank you. Hey guys, Jackie, Maxine, Elijah, and Jerry, welcome. And Clifton, welcome to the business zone. Um, so what did he invent? He was an inventor and engineer. Lewis was born in um, Chelsea, Massachusetts on September 4th, 1848. And he collaborated with science greats like Harry L. Maxim and Thomas Edison. One of his greatest inventions was the, carbo fi the carbon fiber, a viable component of the light bulb. His interventions didn't stop there. He worked with Alexander Graham Bell. Uh, Latimer helped draft the patent for the Bell design for the telephone. His, this genius also designed an improved uh, railroad car bathroom and, an, and the early air conditioning unit. So next time you want to escape from a hot day, realize that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Latimer it was, uh, helped you do that. Our next uh, person is Maria Van Bitten Brown. She was born in 1922 and she died in 1999. Uh, did you know that the first home security was invented by a black nurse? Uh, that's Miss Brown. Although she was a full-time nurse, she recognized security threats to her home and devised a system that would alert her of strangers at her door and contact relevant authorities as quickly as possible. So her, first, her early inventions or her original inventions consisted of the peepholes, a camera, monitors, and a two-way microphone. The finishing touch was an alarm button that, when pressed, would immediately contact the police. So that's actually the ADP system, isn't it? So her patents laid the groundwork for the modern closed-circuit television systems that is widely used for surveillance, home security systems, push-button alarm triggers, cr crime prevention, and traffic monitoring. Uh, next one up is Otis... Hey, Margo, Otis Boykin, and uh, Mr. Boykin was born in 1920, and he died in 1982. Uh, his most notable contribution to science was likely the, the current improvements, the circuit improvements he made to pacemakers after losing his mother to heart failure, a contribution that has saved countless lives since that. He has 26 patents in his name and is famed for the development of the IBM computers, burglar proof cash registers, chemical air filters, and an electric resistor used in controlled missiles and other devices. Our next one up is Mr. Lonnie Jax Johnson. Now, you may know about this guy because I remember a couple years ago he actually uh, made the news. Uh, he was born in 1949, and he's still alive, and he's an aerospace engineer, and he created um, – what he's known for, what you may know for, is that he gave us the most famous water gun, the Super Soaker. So you guys probably heard about that on the news. I know I did. Um, he wasn't a toy maker. He was actually an aerospace engineer for NASA with a resume boosting a stint with the U.S. Air Force, worked on the Galileo Jupiter probe and Mars Observer Project, and he has more than 40 patent patents under his belt. So... And this guy, I know you know, and he also converted uh, converts heat directly into energy. But the squirt gun is what everybody knows him about. Dr. Charles Drew, we all know about him. I think we actually did learn about him in school. There's a very few people they let us know about. George Washington Carver, obviously. Uh, some things they wanted to keep secret. I don't know why, but they did. But Dr. Drew is a physician and a medical researcher, and the Dr. Uh, Charles Drew Hospital is named after him. Uh, Dr. Drew is the person that... Um, 
Thanks to him, blood is available. He was a physician, physician and surgeon and medical researcher and worked with a team at Red Cross on groundbreaking breaking discoveries around blood transfusion. So I think you do know about him. He invented and got ready, and, and he also invented the and get ready because his name is pretty charming, blood mobiles. Uh, these are refrigerated trucks that today transport blood throughout the country uh, for anyone that needs a blood transfusion. So he's, he's, um, he's a prominent doctor in his field and one of the only African Americans during a time when blood donation was still separate along the lines of race. Drew eventually resigned from his position with American Red Cross and in 1950, 50, the Red Cross finally recognized all blood being equal. Our next one up, and my co-host just stepped in, so we got, you can slide on in. <laughs> um, our next one up is Mary and I am talking about the 14 black inventors oh. that some of them that we don't even know about. I didn't know about, but you may know about. Um, but the one we're talking about now is Marion Cloak. And Marion Cloak was inducted into <coughs> the Women Technology into International Hall of Fame and a move that recognizes her remarkable achievements in tech. She holds over 135 patents, primarily in voice over internet protocol, which is VOIP, and some in other areas. She has over 100 patents currently under review. Uh, today, she's the SVP uh, at AT&T and serves as a mentor for women in the ATN labs and sits on the board of the Holocaust and Genocide and Human Rights Educational Center. I think we deserve to say her name again. Her name is Marion Cloak. Marion Cloak. C-R-O-A-K. Never C-R-O-A-K. heard of her. Right? Never heard of her, but you know what? She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. She huh? is phenomenal. <laughs> And see, a lot of us probably thought that that uh, internet uh, video IP stuff wasn't done by her. It was done by someone else. I'm sure we did. Maybe someone in a foreign country, right? Yeah, probably. And, and, you know, right now, a lot of people, I know we just at my home, we just switched over to a VOIP system. Yeah. And who knew? I'm telling you. And uh, it's been out there for a while. It just wasn't getting the the kind of recognition that it deserved. Yeah. But slowly but surely, see, what happened is this system, this method of communication was out there for a long time, but no one really knew about it until companies like uh, Vonage and others start incorporating that. Right, exactly. Then we start hearing about it and people start thinking that was the first time it was about, but... She invented yeah, it a long time ago. Yeah, she did that in, 19, in 2003. Let's see, when did she do that? Um, it was probably her yeah, that did it. That's what I'm saying. Because that's her patent. So yes. she's probably, but then nobody's ever mentioned that that no was a woman. It, just, Even when they talk about women in tech. They won't talk they about never, it. I've never heard this name. And that's why we wanted to repeat her name again. Yeah, because yeah. I've never, ever heard her name. Another young lady, her name is Lisa. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to say her name. Her name is Lisa Gel Gelopter. How, how do you spell it? G E L O B T E R. I guess it's Gelopter. Gelopter. Okay. I guess Zopter. Yeah. So she um, invented the genesis of animation on the web. Wow. See, we do those we do those animations all the time, and we don't know where they're coming from. Right. So this, the, I got one on my commercial. Yeah, the Garis, the DIF. Yeah, yeah. That's her. This is her invention. Wow. And she was in, um, involved with the advent of Shockwave, a technology that formed the beginning of web animation. She also played a major role in the emergency of online video. Later, serving on this as a senior um, management team at Hulu. Uh, Lisa was an interim head of digital for BET Networks and ran technology, product, and business or operations. Today, you can catch her at the White House at the United States Digital Service, and she's currently serving as the chief digital service officer with the U.S. Department of Education. I think we need to post these great innovators on our website. 
Well, you know what? I actually created a video. Hey, that's what I'm talking <laughs> so about. We're so we're going to put that up today. I'm head of the game. Of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, but who knew that, right? Who I knew? mean, I just start who using knew? grits of those when you're when you're on Facebook. Yeah. You get to they do all those animations and yeah. all that kind of stuff yeah. when you want to do a comment and, right. and and you hear something ridiculous yeah. and then you come up with like what the hell exactly. and then you have somebody saying what the hell. Wow. I had no idea. That's amazing. So, no idea. Amazing. Amazing. And now our next guy, his name is Philip, e, and I assume he must might be African, maybe, is Emilia, E-M-E-A-G-W-A-I-L-I. So I'm going to call him Emerji Wally, somebody like that. Uh, he was forced out of school at the age of 14. Mm-hmm. That didn't stop him from becoming one of the greatest computer pioneers of our time. Mm-hmm. In fact, he's often called the Bill Gates of Africa. So wow. that's where he's from. Uh, and uh, an, an American began studying, as an adult, he began studying nature, specifically bees. The construct, construction of the honeycomb inspired him to rethink computer processing. In 1989, he put his idea to work and using 65,000 processes to invent the world's first supercomputer and able to perform 3.1 billion calculations per second. Wow. That's phenomenal. Now I think they use, I hear white, I've heard them, that person not being a black person. (laughs) We never heard of these folks. So obviously they're not recognizing them. No, exactly. Then the next guy up is Mr. Jesse Ernest Wilkins Jr. Finally, a name I can pronounce. Uh, He is one of America's most important contemporary mathematicians. At 13, he became the University of Chicago's younger student, and Wilkins continued his studies there, earned his bachelor's, master's, and eventually earning his doctorate in mathematics at the age of 19. Tell tell me black folks ain't bad. That's genius. (laughs) That is genius. And he's actually from the country I, company I I mean country uh city I'm from. Mm-hmm. He published papers in mathematics, op, optics and nuclear engineering as a mathematician for the American Optical Company in Buffalo, New York. He perfected lens design for microscopes and ophthalmology uses his greatest competi- comp- contribution to s- to scholarship was the development of mathematical models to gain gamma radiation in his work on developing a shield a shielding against gamma radiation. Mm-mm-mm. Goodness that is gracious. Amazing. That is amazing. So those are uh, there's a couple others. I'll save them for next week, but that is a tribute to African American heritage. Your heritage and that was that? celebrating our legacy. Oh, yes. So um wow that's phenomenal. We're, we're about stuff. more than just dance that's and why, sports. <laughs> that's why we want to take Small Biz Pro to the greater, greater level. There you level. go. Look at that. We're going we to be reading about you that's soon. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we're going to be taking it to a greater level. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm just coming from a presentation over at USC. They love the program. I did a, a Oh, pitch. did you? Yeah. Okay. And I met this gentleman there who runs um, uh, an uh, incubator. Oh, and he loves it. He's going, oh, let's try to get this for our entrepreneurs. You know, but he loves mm-hmm. it. And then yesterday I met with Economic Alliance in the Valley. Okay. They love it. So they've got this woman's entrepreneurship program uh-huh. that they want to use it for. Okay. Well, you're on the move, dude. Oh, I'm telling you, man. My job is to get all small minority and women-owned businesses using Small Biz Pro to manage their business. I think that's an excellent idea. That's my idea. goal. Right now, uh, I'm getting ready to sign an agreement with the the veterans, the U.S. the U.S. Veterans Business Alliance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm getting ready to sign an agreement where I'm going to have them use Small Biz Pro for free. I won't charge them for it because okay. they're veterans. Okay. You see what I mean? No one really takes care of them. No one gives them any assistance in terms of entrepreneurship. So I want to be that person who allows them to use the system for free to run their business. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm happy for you because oh, yeah. I know you've put a lot of it. Oh, you've yeah. been working on this for a while, and it's time oh, for it. To, time for us to reap. Yeah, I, we need to have you. You know, the guy that invented <laughs> yeah. the. <laughs> my, my picture should be on there the next. Yeah, right. should be there next. And, Going, and hey. Right, because we do know that for our small businesses, every advantage, they need every advantage oh, for they sure. can get. For sure. it's, it's just It's just necessary because and that's the, how we're going to make some changes. The thing is, if we don't take the advantage, the competition will take it. They will take the you see what exactly, I mean? Exactly, exactly. So you know, in my space, I'm doing the um, the um, uh, let's see, Mr. Larson's outside, but no interest. Uh, LeBron, Mr. Larson can't get in. Can we help him? Thank you. Um, the digital marketing class. Mm -hmm. So we did something a little different. We are yeah. actually reconstructing how our people Very think. Very good. Very good. And so they are. Um, uh, we actually had an online class. Yeah, they told me. They told me there was going to be one. They told me because some of your people are in your. They come to my oh, class. Okay, so all they, right. So they come to mine on Tuesday, then they come it's to mine on, on Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, we actually that's right because Clint Johnson is. Yeah, you're right. Right. Yeah. So we had an online class. Now here's the thing: we went through a whole process to make sure that they could get on. So I sent out a blast the day before and giving them the instructions how to get on Zoom yeah. and how to sign it up. And did I you wanted, record it? We did record it. Yes. And then we wanted them to all get there. I, we didn't want to have the struggles of yeah. it on the day yeah. on the day of, which was yeah. Wednesday. When, uh, and, and it blew Armin away because we literally had 21 people wow. all registered with no issues at all on getting on. That's Some of them were there when I sent the information. Some of them actually came on or Early. at least they, yeah, they were there like at, at four. <laughs> I, was talking to our, I was talking to Armin trying to get it all set up. Yeah. And he, I said, well, there's three people already on <laughs> and we're not going on until 630. That's great. And... And so uh, they were all on, and then we recorded it, yeah. and we operated, and were raising hands, and they just got such a, such a kick out that of it. That is great. Yeah. That is great. I can't see. I can't wait to see the recording. I'll, yeah, so I'll send you I over the recording. So what we did was we um, were having a deep dive mm -hmm. uh, WordPress um a hands-on workshop next week in boot camp. So mm -hmm. this will be their first pay because yeah. we've been doing this. You know, it's, the introduction has been free. Yeah. So we're doing the um, deep di a boot camp so that they, hey, Karen, so that they can really start to customize their sites. Mm -hmm. So we told them what we needed, and, 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 he, and we went through and explained what they needed to do. Yeah. So on Wednesday, we'll have a hands-on yeah. workshop. And then they will, but they will come prepared. That's good. Like and they that. like the fact that it was, um, they love it that it's online. So you know who's in our class, right? Anissa. Who? Anissa is having oh. a phenomenal oh, she's time. In the class? Yeah, she is so <laughs> excited. In fact, hey, when, hey, Michael, when she came, when when we told him we weren't gonna have a class, yeah, um, on Thursday, and I was trying to decide where the class was going to be because we were giving the Urban League a little break and Bonnie a little break. Mm -hmm. And and I said, so we got a momentum going, so we don't want to do that. But I also wanted to kind of, we needed to, we you know we have to spread out the umbilical cord a yeah, little bit because yeah. this becomes an independent thing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make money on the internet, yeah. you got to figure out how to, you know, you got to, there got to be some autonomy to right, it. Right, right, right. So I, I said, well, let's try this. And they just loved it. So we'll probably do a couple class, one that's class good. a month that's good. online. That's and then good. that gets, because that's really where and I want to teach. And then that would get me involved even more because then wherever I am, I can log you in. You can just log in. That's and great. So, and it, they just absolutely loved it. So yeah. Yeah, we'll be good. doing that. So next week we'll be having our first deep dive WordPress. We now have 17 bloggers. Mm, yeah, that's great. And we have. And here's something interesting. So we run a um, one of Armin's clients, which is called Pinch of Yum. Uh, they have a food blog, right? Mm. So 
uh, Arma has been using their site as as a diagram of mm-hmm. how and how much money because these people are quite successful right. at this and they've been doing it for since 2011 yeah. and uh, they started from scratch and they've built up they have like 4.3 million people following wow. them right which means they're making astronomical amounts of money right mm-hmm. and so he got a call from the guy that actually runs the site the mm-hmm. other day to have him help him with something. Yeah. So Armin was telling him, he goes, that is absolutely fantastic. It is, it is. And um, so he, we're going to work on maybe him coming on the show. Oh, very get good. Get him on the show. Very good. And, you know, they run two blogs. They have the food blog mm-hmm. and then they have how to have a food blog. Mm. So the wife runs the food blog and then he runs the other uh-huh. one and they make just, just ridiculous kind of money on it. They're definitely uh, poster children for this program. Because you know what? Um, As I say, for us to move, and I mean black people in our businesses, there has to be money. Mm -hmm. So however we can get these people to get money, Mm -hmm. because they're not going to get it through loans. But you cannot run a business on a marginal budget of nothing. No, you can't. (laughs) You gotta, you gotta have the money. Because entrepreneurship <laughs> means that things will happen when you least expect. Right. And you gotta be ready to sustain that. Right. So. So with the with the with the methodologies with the affiliate marketing, and I've already made six hundred dollars on my affiliate right, with my blue hose. All right. And then I'm getting ready. To, hey, you better get on. That's what and I'm And then I, I'm getting ready to have a QuickBooks class. Oh wow. So now I got my little affiliate That's link good. for you to purchase on sale right now. Yeah. QuickBooks. Are you gonna do it on Zoom? No, I'm going to actually do that one in person. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think for QuickBooks, it has to be in person. In person. But I'm, I'm doing an accounting class right now at the Urban League, and it, we got two more weeks. And I'm going to start doing that one online. Well, I think that one will work online. I think that's an excellent idea. I know we got to go through a break here. I've got about a minute of that. Um, but I think that's phenomenal, Crystal. Yeah, so you got to get, we got to get you online. Uh, we can actually do a class online. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> let's sit down and write that so we can do it. Yeah. Because I'm ready. I'm you ready? ready? You ready I'm to ready. do online? Yeah, because you travel, you do way too much traveling know, all man. up and up and down. You don't even like to fly that much. I you know. certainly don't like to drive that oh, much. I don't. So this I will don't. be perfect for you. But like Tiffany Haddish says, I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay, <laughs> well, ready? we're ready. Well, before we go to break, let me just do this real quick before it's in the event mm-hmm. I don't have time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, guys, Saturday, I have the honor of speaking at the fourth annual Women's Economic De- Empowerment Afternoon Tea Scholarship Fundraiser. Mm-hmm. So I will be speaking there for, at 11 tomorrow, and it's a tea. Mm-hmm. And so the ladies are coming in in tea tea party attire All right. and with beautiful adorned hats. Mm-hmm. I'm not wearing a hat, but I am wearing my African That's attire. What I'm talking about, you like girl. that? Queen Nefertiti. <laughs> Queen Nefertiti. <laughs> and I went over to my little African shop in Inglewood. So I want everybody to go over to the quartet. Um the um it's called the what is it called? Um Quartet Courtour is in on Market Street. The young lady and her husband are absolutely Suzanne and her husband. He's the tailor and he makes the clothes yeah. and they just have a wonderful shop. So it's Black History Month. You guys all need your African Wakanda outfit. So get over there. They got great prices and she's just absolutely phenomenal. I so that. I told her I was promoting her on the show today and um, I'm, I'm building my Wakanda. So I brought a top yeah. and I got two more tops that I'm going to. So that's going to be I'm going to eventually be wearing all that's African what I'm attire. Talking about. <laughs> now, I'm we, embracing my entire my I Africanness. <laughs> before we take a quick break, I, I want to mention this real quickly. For, uh, m- most of you may have known uh, um, that James Ingram, yeah. an R&B singer, yeah, he died about two weeks ago. And but why did it just hit the paper and just enter that well, yesterday? They just put it in the Los Angeles Sentinel because uh, they're sending uh, a lot of tribute and respect to him on here. But he is just, he's a phenomenal singer. He sang with all kinds of great people. Patty Austin, Michael Jackson. He was part of the Quincy Jones uh, collage of, of yeah. artists. Yeah, the we Are awful. the World. I grew up with yeah. him. Yeah. So uh, he's just phenomenal. He died at 66, age 66. 
And uh, if you see his picture, man, he look at that picture. Yeah, he looked actually familiar. pretty good. He had oh, cancer, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they said multiple sclerosis and oh. uh, uh, another uh, muscular problem. But these are things that are uh, attacking our community, yeah. and we need to be aware of these things. We need to pay attention. We get a little symptom. We need to uh, we need to jump on it. I was having a lunch meeting earlier with uh, uh, a sister from the CDC, mm -hmm. and um, she said she was going in her car yesterday. She opened the trunk, mm -hmm. you know, those automatic trunks that goes up and come down, hit her. came down, hit her in the head. Oh, my God. And she just started feeling dizzy, and then all of a sudden she wanted to sleep. I said, no, don't go to sleep. Oh, because she had concussion. concussion. Will, yeah. And oh. now she's feeling it more today. Oh, she so needs to go to the doctor. That's exactly what I told her. But things like those can take us out. Right. So we really need to pay attention. And, uh, you know, that's part of what went on here. So yeah. I just wanted to send some, you know, much respect and big ups to this gentleman. Uh, James Ingram is phenomenal. Yeah. And he's a fabric of the African American he uh, is for landscape. R &B. Yeah, yes. he's really, really yeah. Definitely. That's uh, and and we got to take care of some other stuff. Uh, you know, yeah. we got a big. I got to take care of me too. Yeah, you got to take care of you because <laughs> you don't do that. But the I other don't. thing we don't take care of is what happens when it's time for us to leave. So there's yeah. a big thing going yeah. on on the internet yeah. right now, and we can talk about it a little bit when we yeah. get back with uh, B Smith, that mm -hmm. was the restaurant here, yeah. and her husband is doing all kinds of crazy things. But right. it turns out. Um, it, it, she seems to have no other family, mm -hmm. no other anybody wow. but this individual right. and uh, his who's supposed to be a loving husband who just yeah. moved his side chick in yeah, yeah, yeah. to their house. It's just yeah. like, what the hell? But we need to make sure. We need to take care of business because there's to. things we that don't. are happening. We don't. We don't. We you don't. Know, uh, minorities believe that if you spend money on uh, insurance and things like that to protect yourself in the future, should something happen, yeah, that's not supposed to happen to us. You know, that's morbid. So we'll talk about this on the other side. Right. Uh, and um, it's now uh, 3, 335. Yep. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we're going to bring up our first we're gonna guest. We're going to bring our first guest, and so, we're going to have some more conversation. Excellent. So for those of you who are just tuning in, you're listening to or you're watching The <laughs> Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. Take a break. Hello. Meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186.
So we're back on the business zone with Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And uh, today, Crystal, who do we have in the studios? Well, we have a special guest today. I am very, very honored uh, that she is here. Um, we just talked last night and it just like happened. And she said, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to come on and that's like, great. we want to have you. And it just worked out perfectly. So that's today how, we have two attorneys. That's in how different entrepreneurship spaces, works. And they're both here to talk about uh, what they do. Miss uh, Sean White, first I want to let you guys know, you guys, have, Alicia's been here, Alicia Madsen White has been here, she sat uh, in. White Madsen has yeah. been here as a co-host, mm -hmm. and she's um, the founder of the Bella Network, mm -hmm. and so this young lady is a Bella, mm -hmm. and she's also the sister of Alicia, Very nice. uh, of Alicia. Uh, she's a West Coast native and result-oriented executive, community servant, and a lawyer with a superior record for designing complex partnerships partnerships, gaining consensus, and spearheading meaningful, positive, and sustainable charge. She um, served as the general chief counsel to a private foundation. She uh, head of global contracting for technology nonprofit, the first internal general counsel at a black-owned bank, a VP and business development counsel in the law department of, the for of a Fortune 50 financial services company, and a corporate associate in the international practice of AM100 law firms. She has uh, worked on broad ranges of global finance transactions, uh, mergers and acquisitions, joint ventures, global partnerships, philanthropic efforts and licensing deal, program-related investments, grant-making her um, activities, and uh, fin. fin which I mean, I guess it's assuming financial tech initiatives and general regulation matters. And through her career, she has blended her passion for driving inclusive growth with her acumen in business to address economic insecurity and inequality. Throughout her life, she has actively pursued uh, travel opportunities and an interest sparked by her parents in hosting ex an exchange student and her own junior and her own junior year of high school spent in Spain at the age of six. And she's always traveling. I think mm -hmm. last year you were in Israel oh, and Dubai. Over. You were all over the place last year. Every time I looked up, there was a picture <laughs> of her somewhere on some monument somewhere we're, we're in another country. We're going to have to get her our own private jet. <laughs> yeah, her own private jet. You yeah. need your own uh, jet. Well, welcome. Thank Glad you. to have welcome, you. Welcome, Ms. White. Thank you for being here. And we had a lively conversation. Um, she, you know, she she would come to the Bella conferences, and she kind of she was around there, but you didn't really get because she was in you were working a lot mm -hmm. yeah and so um so now I'm, I'm pleased and we had a great conversation about our community last night Absolutely. and um you know when you when you meet people that want to make a change and want to help in the the changing process mm -hmm. that has to take place in mm -hmm. our community so that we can grow and become successful mm -hmm. It's great. That's great stuff. Beautiful. Yeah. That's well, great welcome synergy. to the business zone. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. One of the things that I was always impressed by at those conferences whenever you and I were on the side talking was that I really felt that our heads were in the same place and that our hearts were in the same place around really wanting to see economic development for our community. And so I just, I'm one, happy to be here, and two, um, just really excited to be sitting next to a kindred spirit and to have just met Gilbert. Thank so, you. Yeah. Appreciate there will it. be synergies for all of us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's because, it, you know, as I said, my passion, I love being black, mm -hmm. and I'm unapologetically black. Mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem telling anybody that, but I just, <laughs> what hurts is, that we just haven't grown to our potential. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, there's some situations that prevent that from happening, or they try to put obstacles in our places that mm -hmm. prevents that happening. But um, not going to stop us. <laughs> not at all. And, and I think some of what you, you mentioned in your intro about really highlighting some of our success stories is that we have been successful. We are successful mm -hmm. in these areas. And so I, I do a lot of work in tech. And we're led to believe in many instances that we, we don't excel in math. Mm -hmm. We don't excel in science, and we look mm -hmm. back over our history, and we see that that's just not true, mm -hmm. that we have a long example of having our, our predecessors and, and those who um, have paved the way in so many industries mm -hmm. be people who look like us, mm -hmm. right. who just didn't get the recognition. So, um, you know, you asked me what Black History Month meant to me, and I, 
you know, how you started was it's that it's a reminder of who we are, mm -hmm. the richness of our story, that our story did not begin with mm -hmm. the slavery story. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that that's not all that we're about, even though it's not what we're taught right. traditionally. Mm -hmm. And then it's also an opportunity for us to, to take a scorecard and say, how do we leverage that to move ourselves forward? So mm -hmm. where have we been over the last year? Where are we now and what are our challenges and what are the opportunities that we can take advantage of in the coming year? So, yeah, again, happy to be here. No, yeah. And it's yeah, a continuation definitely. of telling our story. That's <laughs> really what uh, Black History Month and year is all about. Mm -hmm. Continuously tell the story because one of the things we recognize in marketing is that consumers, you don't really hit them until they get the message at least seven times. Mm -hmm. Seven times. You got to keep hitting them with the same message because the first time they hear it, oh, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not mm -hmm. interested. Oh, I'll mm -hmm. get to it later. Then the seventh time, you start seeing some kind of relevance. You're going, hmm, maybe I should pay attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and then after you start doing that, then they start paying attention and start uh, um, accepting it. So we got to keep telling that story. Well, that's actually, again, when it comes to what this month means to mm -hmm. me in terms of some of the challenges that I'm trying to tackle in my own personal work. Yes. And um, again, you mentioned I travel a lot because a lot of what I do has been being part of an international practice at a firm and mm -hmm. doing development deals and, um, uh, you know, really having an opportunity to see where dollars go and mm -hmm. come from yeah. outside of this country yeah. and all mm -hmm. of the opportunities right. that we have when we think of our marketplace mm -hmm. and and our consumers and our contracting way beyond the United oh, yes. States in terms oh, yes. of scope and scale. Oh, yes. And we we are respected. The, the black community has, and mm -hmm. we don't necessarily realize this in many right. respects, a reputation around the world that is not exactly the same as mm -hmm. what it is here in this country. Yes. And so we are... Uh, we are viewed as, ta you know, trendsetters, uh, tastemakers all over the world. Oh, yeah. And there are, um, you know, industries in Asia and, 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 uh, and uh, Africa where we are being modeled, emulated, and really respected. That is so, true. so true. That's, that's just one of those things that ends up being really important. But one of the things that I see is that we we are focused on our development again as being something that happens here local mm -hmm. um, and we really need to broaden that focus yeah. Yeah. yeah i think so in fact you know when i i do a lot i watch a lot of international uh, movies and when you look at africa uh you see us you see them emulating i saw a video yesterday that they were em em emulating to a t michael jackson and nero mm -hmm. i mean it down to the babies yeah. and i'm like wow but we don't know that but yeah. again it's because the information doesn't you know we just we're in our little cubicles so yeah. to speak our little silos and we don't see a broader world we don't even know something exists outside in some cases four blocks from where we well live, not right? only that they've got this propaganda campaign going on so others will hear the negative or the not so true stuff about us and they think it's true so that's why we got to tell our own story mm -hmm. Absolutely. we cannot allow others to tell our story for us mm -hmm. won't be the same and it won't be factual no so, exactly yeah. which is you know one of the reasons you know this is one of the reasons we started this show um, was because one I wanted to keep recycling black dollars in the forefront of everybody's mind Absolutely. and then two um, I think I don't care how many times we repeat it and if we keep repeating it and it's recorded somewhere mm -hmm. and we can keep reblasting and mm -hmm. reintroducing uh, people to that information mm -hmm. I think it's so important for us to be able to do that, right. um, every now and then we'll we'll boost the show on um, in Africa. Yeah. You know, I'll mm. put it on uh, Facebook, and we get. I think I boosted the show last week, and it got like sixty five thousand views. Phenomenal wow. support. Yeah, they love the business. Zone. <laughs> they love it. Kenya, Nigeria, <laughs> it's all over. Love yeah, the all over the zone. continent of yes. Africa. And this month is just a, a great opportunity because yes. we have the spotlight on mm -hmm. our community. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Not just here, but yes. all over the world. All over so the you're world. right when you talk about. The message, someone yes. needing to hear the message oh, seven yeah. times. Oh, yeah. The month of February gives us a lot of opportunities oh, yeah. to get the message we, out. Not we, just who we celebrate, yes. but also what our needs are, right. mm -hmm. what we what we expect our allies mm -hmm. in the business community to do. I'd really like to see 
this month not just be about the, the commercials and other things that celebrate our inventors and mm-hmm. our hidden figures, but also about launching initiatives yeah. and using that airtime to say this is what we're going to commit to for supplier diversity. Yes. This is yes. what our initiative is going to be for the next year yes. around specific um, customer right. base, growing a customer base mm-hmm. or contracting or, with... Or you know, getting entrepreneurs ready. Absolutely. You know, getting them contract ready and business ready or even bank loan ready. That's the type of thing we want to do. Now, tell us a little bit about the tech space you're in and how it relates to what you do. Sure. So, Crystal, so it's, I, I do kind of any um, complex transaction. Yes. And I do traditional licensing. But one of the things that we were talking about last night that I've gotten really excited about was this um, uh, new kind of AI and predictive uh, technology that is uh, geared around creating more metrics for lending and for qualifying mm. businesses and individuals beyond the FICO score. Mm. And so that's it's something that I, I personally um, have been learning a lot about. And so I just wanted to bring it to the show as being something that people should really be looking into. Is it something uh, you're developing or is it something that exists somewhere? So there are a handful of uh, companies, clearly because of the, the tech industry yeah. being focused so much still in the Bay Area and here yeah. in Los Angeles, although it's all over the country, We have a handful of uh, uh, companies being run by executives that have come from some of the the big fish who did a lot of the algorithms around advertising, Mm -hmm. you know, the things that make sure Mm -hmm. you're seeing the pop-ups. Yeah, those cookies and all of that. Uh, Well, and recognizing that there was a benefit to a lot of the data that was being collected Mm -hmm. in in, – the financial service space. So that's what I mean when I I say fintech. It's this idea that – Computers can, in a very brief period of time, go out and gather tremendous amounts of data. And if we can utilize that data, we can find ways to better predict or to, to add elements of, um, of uh, help around qualifying businesses where maybe or, – or in, entrepreneurs where maybe the FICO score is not something that's serving them. You have got my attention 150%. <laughs> Because we've been putting systems together. You know we all don't learn the same way, right? Mm -hmm. So some people are trying to get us to learn like other groups. It's never going to happen because our background, our environment, where we came from, it's different. So we're going to learn differently. So what you just mentioned, it's music to my ears and my heart. So what I want to do, I really would love to figure out how we can use the AI piece to create um, algorithms around entrepreneurs, how we can get them set up so that they can meet a certain criteria. We can work in partnership with the lenders, okay, and contract providers and see how we can make that work. So this is, this is something that um, got me excited. Uh-huh. Clearly you're as excited as I am. Oh, yeah. Um, and some of the work that I've been doing has been with organizations that are focused on um, – creating access to credit using non-traditional data, statistics, and means. Now, I think that's exciting for our community Mm -hmm. because, like you said, it's not just about how we learn. It's about how we get categorized. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, And – there, there are other indications mm-hmm. of success yes. beyond that credit score. Yes. And if we rely on that, then we're never going to see the gains for black businesses right. here in L.A. or right. across the country, potentially because of a whole host of other economic right. issues that we can't get into in detail right, right now mm-hmm. that um, have it so that the traditional means don't serve us. So, so I'm going to throw something out there right now because this is an experience of mine. I, I dealt with a small business recently, and I found this out. So this person is a sole prop. They've been paying their mortgage, and somehow the county decided to send them a letter telling them they owe taxes, which they really don't owe. It's just a count, the county's way of trying to collect additional money from people, so they call it supplemental tax. Mm -hmm. We don't know what supplemental tax is because you already are scheduled to pay your taxes. So because they didn't pay that, now it's on their credit report. Now it's Mm -hmm. affecting them from getting credit. Now this is a business that's been paying their bills. They've been doing what they're supposed to do. They've been generating revenues. So that algorithm you're talking about can be applied to a business like that to show, 
hey, this business has been paying, they've been generating revenues, they're depositing X amount in their account every month. Therefore, that FICO score stuff shouldn't apply to them. Another well, method should. So I'll, I'll put on my, my <laughs> corporate lawyer hat that says they should really hire a lawyer <laughs> and, and really look into protecting their credit score. So yes. one of the things is until we get to a place, and the AI is, is about more than just statistics that relate to them as an individual. It's, it's, it, is, it is copious amounts of data mm -hmm. that are predictive around um, – communities in, right. in, a, in a very different way right. that says, you know, how do we identify based on trends in a community who's mm -hmm. most likely to pay and repay and who's invested in their business mm -hmm. and other things. But um, on the credit protection, mm -hmm. we all know that until we're in a different place, mm -hmm. right. it, I, you know, it, it would not be prudent for mm -hmm. me to not say right. in that instance that the person should seek counsel right. because if there was a tax liability that was assessed that was not um, relevant or right. didn't apply to them. Right, right. Then, and I'm not a tax attorney, but right. they, they, that, those are things you should fight. Exactly. And I, and I will say, I have zealously protected mm -hmm. my own credit because until we open up our minds, right. that is really the access and path to yes. a lot of things for a lot of us. Exactly. But one of the things that I, I did want to raise that we talked about last night is that I want us to also get innovative around the types of partnerships we ask mm -hmm. for. So I was having a great conversation with um, a woman outside of Baltimore who is just a superstar rock star in the social investing space. And one of the things we kept saying was there's a focus on capital. And we know that capital is necessary, mm -hmm. right? And we know that mm -hmm. there are challenges around that. Yeah. But one of the things that really is, it's sort of that give a man a fish, he'll eat, mm -hmm. teach him how to fish, yes. is that one of the other things we can really look for, and this is where I say my background is in complex partnerships and um, and joint ventures and things mm -hmm. like that is how do we say, well, give us contracts, yeah. you know, give us commitments yeah. for something long term right. in terms of your supplier diversity mm -hmm. is one area or in other in uh, other areas yeah. that allow us to then leverage those contracts right. for capital right. in, in the long run mm -hmm. and grow and build our businesses. Give us commitments to um, branding that allows us to have access to customers, which yeah. is another long term not not the capital today, right. but it's the long term. We're growing the customer base. We're, we have contracts that we can rely on mm -hmm. so that we can staff up our business mm -hmm. over a three to five year time period right. in a way that is meaningful and mm -hmm. allows us to mm -hmm. forecast out what we can do in our community. So mm -hmm. it's if somebody and I always say if somebody's not willing to write you a check, mm -hmm. get them to commit to something. See, and, and you're singing the same song we've been singing on this show for three years now. We're trying to get small businesses not to just focus on transactional business mm -hmm. because transactional business, customer comes in today, you take care of them. They may not come tomorrow, not next week, mm -hmm. not next month. So you don't know where that revi Absolutely. other revenue is coming from. But contractual business, mm -hmm. now you have a contract for at least a year, two, three years. You can, you can budget. You can do projections. You can do all of those things. You can hire people. And you can market on that. Yes. Right? So yes. that's been something that's been important to me wherever I am is finding a way to utilize and create long-term opportunities for us to work with black businesses that allow them to then go out and say, provided that we're ha we're happy to make the referral but that mm -hmm. we're we're making a referral so if we believe in those businesses then we should believe in their growth crystal you have found a gem I know. You have found a gem. She, she is singing our song. I know. That's what we're about. And she came out of corporate, she's from corporate America, so she understands how you scale that yeah. business. And, I, and I've always said that, right? Yeah. I, I started in corporate America. I knew what my exit plan was, but you have to be there because you understand something different. And, and Sean and I talked last night. So after the recession, everybody's credit was in the toilet. Yes. But why did everybody else rise mm -hmm. and we're still mm -hmm. there? Everybody That's had to redevelop, about. right? Everybody had yeah. to recreate themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. And that FICA score, everybody was white clean at that point. Yeah. But why, as black people, are mm -hmm. we still there and stigmatized That's what I'm by talking that about. where you had corporations? I mean, look at the number of corporations that are bankrupt. Look yeah. at the president, for yeah. that matter. Yeah. And, and she and I talked about yeah. that. He's bankrupt six companies. Mm -hmm. But he's still able to go get loans That's right. from somebody. That's right. So That's right. we have to change that mindset right. or at least develop other oper uh, uh, lanes or paths for us to operate in. We, and it has to come up here so that we don't feel so 
um, demoralized. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I shared with Sean that, uh, you know, over the years since being the director, co-director of Recycling Black Dollars, I've been to a number of uh, capital, raising capital, or there's capital, abundant capital out there for everyone. And as the banks are having this conversation, and they invited everybody, they had all of us, all the CBOs bring all their people, and everybody's excited because, oh, wow, finally somebody's going to give us some money, right? Mm -hmm. And you get there, and they're talking about all these wonderful programs and mm -hmm. all this money out there mm -hmm. and then they get to but it's all predicated on, on your, your FICO, FICO score, score. score, right? And all of a sudden, and I don't even know if they notice it. The it's just like goes out of it's the just room. the it goes out of the room, and they and their shoulders uh, drop, and because they know that they're being unfairly evaluated, right? Because those requirements, it, it it doesn't work for them, and that's why as an economic development entity, part of my evaluation criteria wouldn't be FICO. It would be that company's ability to repay because many of these small businesses, they're generating revenues. They're paying employees. They're paying their vendors mm -hmm. and they have money left in the bank. But mm -hmm. because the FICO score is bad, they're telling them you don't have the ability to do this. Or if they don't happen to have capital, look at or or, or collateral. Yeah. I mean, look how many people lost their homes. Right. So once you lose and she and I talked about this why you have to personally yeah. guarantee yeah. and put your home up right. as the guarantee yeah. for a loan right. for your business and what happened yeah. and, to, and, and we're about to arrive right yeah. back there again yeah, yeah. It's and headed there. So we, it's headed there yeah. again yeah. and so if you lose your collateral mm -hmm. now you're no longer loan, loan right. worthy but you've been running a business for 10, 15, 20 right. years there's a couple of businesses that have been in LA for over 30 years and I know one for specifically she can not get a loan mm -hmm. and they have they have collateral everywhere they yeah. own half of yeah. central avenue right, right. but she has been denied a right. loan so many times that yeah. now she's like i don't even want to be i don't even want to go look for it and anybody. that's something i think our next guest when he comes up here we could probably talk about a little bit too because yeah. since he runs an economic development agency let's see how we can do this because no longer are we going to depend on certain groups to survive we got to be self-sufficient. We got to figure out a way. We got to pull our resources and let it work for us, mm -hmm. our small businesses. Exactly. Yes. Because we we if if what is it? I think what was this, the latest report that came out a couple years ago that we're like two hundred and it take us two hundred and fifty something years to yeah it came out and, and Michael might know it. It says um, it would take us two hundred and forty years to actually get to the level or on a, on an even basis I've with white America. I've so heard was about something, it. I think yeah. that was a, I don't know if it was in the New York Times yeah. or yeah. Forbes. There was some study was that some was done. Yeah. yeah, that for black people. So, I mean, 240 yeah. some years, yeah, not that's not happen. even, our babies aren't even born. It's yeah. not going <laughs> to happen. We're, we're going to have to take a different course. <laughs> but we're at the top of the hour. Let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come right back and continue. And we're going to bring Michael this discussion. up with Sean, because oh. I think that's a conversation, so he can pop up over Excellent, here, excellent. I think that would be great okay, so you don't mind you, oh no of course not okay so for all of you who have been tuning in this is a great conversation i want you guys to participate give us a call as well our phone number here is 323-293-3375 that's uh 323-293-3375 you're on the business zone with crystal and gilbert buchanan your small business paramedic take a break hello meet larry larry is a general contractor Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. 
Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced And we're document. back on the business zone with... Crystal. Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic, our very special guest, Miss... Sean White. And uh, we've got a new guest on stage with us, which we're really, really are welcoming here today. And Crystal, who do we have here on oh, stage well, with us? Oh, well, actually, it worked out perfectly because we actually have two attorneys All right. <laughs> on stage today, but that both of them have uh, extensive corporate background. Mm -hmm. um, but this uh, gentleman here, you know, Urban League is really close to my heart, and mm -hmm. you know that I've been doing a lot of collaborative work with them for the last... 10 years, as long as I've been the co-director of Recycling Black Dollars, and I love the Urban League. And um, But today we have the president and CEO of the Los Angeles Urban League. Mm -hmm. uh, he's currently serving uh, there, one of the oldest and most respected civil rights organizations in the United States, dedicated providing economic empowerment, educational opportunities, and the guarantee of civil rights for underserved communities in the Los Angeles area. I began. He began his work service as the interest from president in November 2017 and was appointed to the president in 2018. In September 2013, he was nominated to by President Obama to serve as the United States Ambassador to the Council of International Civil 
Air, uh, Aviation Organization, uh, ICAO, a UN specialized uh, agency in a position that he held from July 14th to January 2017. The 36 member of the ICAO Council set the standards and re recommended practices and policies in support of international civil, civil aviation sector worldwide. Uh, before serving as the, the ambassador, he served on the board of airport commissioners for the Los Angeles airport from 2005 to 2011 and uh, the president of the BOAC from 2008 to 2011. And during his tenure, the board was responsible for over overseeing the management of the systems of uh, airports under its control, including Los Angeles International Excellent. Airport, uh, L.A., or, or um, Ontario International, and Van Nuys. And from 1980 to 2011, he practiced law at the prestigious international law firm Scanton? Scanton. Scanton. Uh, Arps, Slate, Maj Mar. Mar, okay, and Flom. <laughs> with, that, with that being said, we'll just have him tell us a little bit right, about it. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's a firm, the largest uh, uh, law firm in the world with 1,700 attorneys and 22 offices around the world. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for having so me. So pleased to have you. Welcome to the Business Zone, Mr. Larson. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, the Urban League, as I said, is near and dear. And one of the reasons is that my uncle... Um, had a career at the Urban League under John Mack, and he actually uh, spearheaded, along with John Mack, the LEAP program, um, which was, I guess, a $5 million program, which um, uh, helped contractors or, or those in the trades get into the trades. And uh, so many of the, the tradesmen, all levels, the reason they have their their license is because he helped them with the pre-testing. So we're now actually in talks again. My uncle still has that program, been doing that program uh, for a long time. And so we talked to Brian um, over at the uh, Urban League. And so he... RCRCO. Right. So yes. he's bringing his team of young men, of, of people, and he's now... They're training new guys that have come out of and gotten their license and now retired in the right trade, again. and they're still reaching back to the and bringing in and recruiting new people for the construction agent. Industry. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's so important right now because Los Angeles is ground zero for the most, uh, the, the, the biggest infrastructure projects in the country mm -hmm. are going on right here between yeah. Metro and Los Angeles World Airports yes. and other private public private partnerships. Mm -hmm. There's more digging going on in Los yes. Angeles than anywhere yes. else in the world. Yes, yes we know because we get stuck in traffic. All the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it is great that we're we're in a growth process. We just and it, it, it appears that it is a great time for us as Black people living in Los Angeles to um, change our economics. But how do we do that? What what are the methodologies? And I, and I think one of the reasons I collaborate is I I know. Not I think I know we cannot do this in silos, and I know we cannot do this by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We all have to come together yes. to make a change for our business communities and our and our families and our children. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It, it, you you ask the right question, mm -hmm. which is how do we move forward and not spend too much more time on why we're here because yeah. we are here because of of. Centuries of discrimination, mm -hmm. centuries of, of of holding us back, centuries of making sure that we do not get our fair share of what's uh, of the bounty that was this country mm -hmm. and is this country. Um, but uh, there is a pathway forward, mm -hmm. and it's going to involve all of us. We, it's got to be all hands on deck. We can't sit back and wait for someone else to to do something for us or, or, or give us a hand because we we have got the ability to do it. We just have to put our heads together and make sure that we're holding each other's hands and, and, and walking the walk and talking the talk. That's mm -hmm. great. That's yeah. great. And we were having, while you were watching us, having this wonderful conversation with Sean on some avenues mm -hmm. and, and and some solutions because that's where we should be right now is that solution orientation mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. opposed to pro we all know what the problems are mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to not keep talking and beating yeah. them to death yeah. now we just have to have some sort of solution so what do you guys think i mean 
in addition to what she's speaking of. I, I, I was fascinated by the conversation and, and mm-hmm. very encouraged by the conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything you're talking about is critical to uh, making sure that we have the, uh, the ability to compete in the market on a, on a level playing field because mm-hmm. there hasn't been a level playing field. Right. Uh, and the, the algorithmic uh, uh, approach is something that is critical. The FICO score is, is too broad and, 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 uh, and doesn't give the, the correct picture of mm-hmm. the people that – and the businesses or the people that, uh, that stand behind them. Mm-hmm. But I would also say that that's not enough. Right. Um, the, 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 the algorithms are going to give – additional metrics and the additional metrics plus the work that you're doing in terms of of helping our entrepreneurs cross the T's and dot the I's in Mm -hmm. terms of the way they manage their business Mm -hmm. is going to be very helpful. Yes, yes. But one of the key elements has got to be relationships with the people that have the money to lend, have the money to invest. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to develop those relationships and we have to be upfront about the necessity for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's be clear: the majority, uh, uh, the, 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 the other biz- the other communities that are above us in terms of access to capital and access to credit have the same blemishes that we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If not more, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But they still have access to credit, and mm-hmm. access to capital. And mm-hmm. Why is that? There's privilege on their side. Well, but what is what is the source of that privilege? What is the, 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 the source of that privilege is a relationship between them and the people that have that is the true. money. That yeah. is true. That so is true. we so one of the things that we have to do is develop those relationships. Mm-hmm. Number one, we have to do what we can to increase the number of financial institutions within our community that are able to play on that side of the, right, of the game. Right, but right. even without that, yeah. we have to be intentional about developing relationships with the money lending part of the economy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I first saw a glimpse of this when I first started at Skadden Arps. Mm. Uh, the year is 1980. Uh, Carter interest rates are 18 percent. The prime rate was 18 percent. Wow! Wow! You know, we're looking to buy a house, and uh, because of the relationship between Skadden Arps and Citibank, every attorney in the firm w- was automatically a member of uh, Citibank's private bank. So. For me to get a loan, all I had to do was call over there and say, mm-hmm. please send me an application. Right. Mm-hmm. They sent an application over. They never, I never see anybody. Mm-hmm. They, so they don't an know what your, color, what your skin color is. They don't know what my skin color is. In, and they assume, of course, that mm-hmm. I'm not black <laughs> because <laughs> Scatton doesn't hire black people. Yeah. <laughs> Fill out the application. Send it in. Get the loan. Get the house at 18 percent what have you. A couple of years later, rates come down to, to, to a manageable 13%. Yeah, it was manageable. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time to refinance. Right. Call them up, ask for the form. She sends it over. I fill out the form, send it back. She calls me up. She says, Mr. Lawson, we have a little bit of a problem. You have too much personal debt on on this application, uh, you don't meet the criteria. Do you mind if we wipe these out? Mm. Wow. So now you're beginning <laughs> to see the workings <laughs> of it, how it works. Wow. Mm. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, so 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 th- it didn't it doesn't matter for them if they meet the criteria. Right. 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 They'll wipe it out. Right. So let's fast forward <laughs> to, to, to 25 years later. Yeah. Uh, I'm now a partner. Uh, my, my sons have graduated Morehouse College. They're uh, investing in real estate. Uh, uh, 
we uh, and I helped support them in, in in getting the real estate. So the loan is in my name, mm -hmm. and we want to refinance again. So uh, the bank calls up and says, uh, "You know, I'm not re I'm not retired, right. quite frankly, from the firm." Okay. And uh, I get this call from the banker saying, "Mr. Lawson, we're working on your the refinancing of your loan, uh, but there's a mistake on your application. Uh, you put your uh, annual income in the monthly income box. Mm. <laughs> so, no, that's my monthly <laughs> income. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Just to rub off on you. <laughs> but he doesn't stop there. Oh, well, can we see a copy of your bank statements for the uh, last three months? <laughs> Send them those. Can we see the bank Back statements the for the for the three months before that? <laughs> Can we see a copy of your? Because I'm retired. Yeah, right, right. Can right. we see a copy of your retirement letter? Oh my sure. lord! Can we see an original copy? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> now you don't have this law firm behind. Well, be, because, yeah, because I don't have a relationship with this particular. That's bank. right, right, exactly. So all of my boxes are checked. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Wow. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. We have to develop relationships with the financial. First of all, we have to build the financial institutions mm -hmm. within our mm -hmm. community yes. so we don't have to go outside. That's right, what I'm exactly. talking about. I mean, understand that in this town, it, it, when, you, when you look at the stats in the Korean community, mm. a dollar that goes into the Korean community stays there mm -hmm. for over 50 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that multiplier effect is why the Korean community looks the way it does. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. And they also there's a there's a something circulating on social media, and I and I was trying to find it, um, and I think it was a it was an interview, and they were interviewing. I, I want to say he was a Japanese businessman or a Chinese businessman. His name is Chang, and so he was being interviewed, and they were asking him. Uh, his relation about white supremacy and also what he thought his views on black America. And so he basically said, if you're a minority, you are dealing with white supremacy. Doesn't matter what minority you're dealing, who you are, it just you are. He says, but the way we as Asians deal with it is if you tell us that we can't get a loan at your bank, then we go build our own bank. Mm. You tell us our children can't go to your school, then we build our own school. Mm. Our focus is on our people. It's not that we don't like black people. We just like our people more. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to. So we take care of our own first. Then we worry about outside. So we don't want our people to be <coughs> hungry. We don't want them to be uneducated. And we don't want them to be successful. So we make sure we give them jobs. We do everything in our own. He says, but the difference between us and them is we do it quietly. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have mass marches mm -hmm. to do what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We just do it. Yeah. And we do it together. And that's why we are slowly moving in. And they're almost like under the radar because no one's really paying attention to them to mm -hmm. do what they're doing yeah. because they're not making any big noises mm -hmm. about it. They're not wearing their wealth around their neck and they're on their cars or any of that. They're just but they're in their communities doing what they're doing, taking care of their own. That's exactly right. That is mm -hmm. exactly right. And, and and that is a model that we have to, that we clearly have to emulate, but we don't have to emulate it on our own. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact is that we have been, I mean, you, you, everybody on this panel understands the, 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 the math of investing and the math of the multiplier effect and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And you know that uh, the worst thing you can do to, uh, to, to follow that model is lose money. Losing right. money is worse than, than, than gaining a small amount. Yeah. And we, and we have lost is the wrong way. We, we, our, 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 the assets that we had have been taken away from us mm -hmm. forcefully mm -hmm. uh, it, through the enslavement period and after. Mm -hmm. uh, you look what happened in uh, Oklahoma with with the um, with our Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. You look at uh, what all of the things that you guys have been talking about mm -hmm. 
have been ripped from us. Yes. And so we're starting at less than zero in a lot of different ways. So, but let's not talk about the past. The question is, what do we do on, uh, going forward? Yeah. We, ha- we have to, number one, change the focus to the one that you just described. That is absolutely critical, Crystal. Mm-hmm. We, we have to uh, be looking at the next generation and the generation after that. What are we mm-hmm. going to accumulate in order to pass on to them the assets that are necessary for them to start not at square one, but at square 10 mm-hmm. in, in, in a 15 uh, square race. Right. Um, so, so, so that's critical, but we also don't have to do it by ourselves. I mean, you, you talked about this, this, this Mr. Chang. Uh, there are alliances that we can create mm. uh, that will allow us, while we're building our financial institutions, because we have to do that. Yeah. We have to rebuild and we have... We had them, mm-hmm. and 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 I, we can talk about the history of, of, of what happened to them. But but uh, we we and we need to do that in order to to not make the same mistakes again. But the fact is, we need to rebuild them, and in the meantime, we need to collaborate with those who are willing to collaborate with us. Mm. And you mentioned uh, the the Chinese community. Mm-hmm. I mentioned the Korean community. Uh, one of the things that. Uh, that we're seeing within the Korean community is that even though they have been very successful on the economic front, and I applaud them for all of that, Mm -hmm. they have not been as successful on the political front Mm -hmm. as we have been. Mm -hmm. There is an opportunity for us to collaborate with them, build the relationships Mm -hmm. that will give us um, access to credit and Mm -hmm. access to capital Mm -hmm. and work together while we are building ours. Mm -hmm. Right. And move forward. I, I, the, the algorithms, we definitely have to take advantage of that, mm-hmm. but we need relationships yes. with mm-hmm. the people who have mm-hmm. uh, the resources that are going to be beneficial for us, and we need to uh, work together for the benefit of all uh, underserved communities and, 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 and understand what we can do. To We're stronger together. There's no question yeah, about it. Yeah, definitely stronger if you pull uh, all that together. I would love to just, um, because I served as general counsel to a black-owned bank in the Northeast, I have got to carry that point just a little bit further also about how we need to support these institutions so that they don't die. So <clears throat> one of the things is the history of these institutions is they started – funding entrepreneurship in our community way before the other guys. When they were redlining us in the 60s and the 70s, these were the institutions that gave us residential loans, that gave us commercial loans for the funeral parlors, for the barbershop, for the beauty parlor. And they are really struggling after this last financial crisis, largely because they're saddled with a lot of um, new compliance requirements that they face, rightfully so, because the consumer had issues in the last financial crisis that big banks do, and it's hard for them. We don't have, when I relocated here, I realized we have more of them in the Northeast and in the Mm -hmm. South, but you can live here and have a checking account and do business with a black-owned bank in the South, in in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I have a good friend whose father is a CEO of a bank there, and he does business development. The bank I was at is in New York and New Jersey. We've got them in in, uh, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. We've got them around the country. And if we don't shine a spotlight on them and give them our business, and so many of them in the last, after the last economic downturn, when I was there as a part of a turnaround team, have been trying to build virtual platforms so that they can provide services to our community across the country and around the globe. So they're trying to get into the mobile banking that we see that's really sprouting up in parts of the the, um, African continent. And we owe these institutions an investment in their survival, even if it's just that you carry a small savings account there that allows them to build up their business base and seek other opportunities. If you have an opportunity to provide them um, payroll processing services or other things that they offer for your business, given the way the Internet works and e-commerce works, it doesn't matter whether or not they're here in L.A., you should still support them. So that's something that I feel very near and dear about. <laughs> and whenever you're at your other financial institution, you should be asking them, what are you doing to support the community banks that, that lend when you don't? Uh, because large financial institutions can also do joint development deals and 
and work with the community banks and offer them opportunities on very lucrative investments to be a part of that, clubbed into those investments and all of those things we should be forcing them to do so that our institutions survive. And that's one area here in Southern California where I have seen our Asian communities really do support these financial institutions and mm -hmm. they are here and they're thriving. We don't see them as much, but they are here and thriving and they really are supporting the communities here. And actually, um, years ago, um, Recycled Black Dollar, when Muhammad was alive, and this is when he founded RBD in the 1900, in, in 19, well, I think it was in the 19 something, he actually had a National Change Bank Day. And so he moved about $4 million from of the other banks to Broadway Federal. And at that time, it was owned by. Oh, Paul, I mean, it was run by Paul. It still is run by black people. Um, and they actually do have a relationship. They, they, be, they are private. They are publicly traded now. And their relationship is with the Koreans. That's who is actually there. So that's RBD has always had their account at Broadway Federal. Um, and there are a number of our communities or black businesses that when Muhammad made that initiative, everybody moved, they're, they're still there. But at this point, you know, a lot of their people have retired. And um, so we really should think about that. And then One United has multiple branches all over, but they're, they're, they're kind of limited in where they lend money. I think they have some sort of criteria. I don't know if they don't do mortgages or they don't do business. I'm not quite sure which one. Mm -hmm. They don't do one of them, they don't do. but. Um, Broadway Federal does everything. They're a full lending bank. Absolutely. Um, but one of the issues that Broadway Federal did and the reason they uh, had to um, combine their, their, or, or their services with the Koreans was they were the only bank that actually lended to churches. And they got hit hard when at the recession. So they're really starting trying to rebuild from that. But if depositors went over there and we actually embraced them, then at least that's a local black bank in the community. Or, or it's actually now a community-based bank. Cause, but primarily their, their depositors are black over there. So we have to, you're absolutely right, because you got to have people that look like us, that understand us, and, and, and why we're building capital. Because I personally believe if you have money, then it's not a credit issue, right? <laughs> if you can pay your bills, if you have the money, but if you got to move the money around to pay Peter to pay Paul, because the, the limits are minor, I mean, you got limited resources, then you got to do what you got to do. And, and on top of that, take care of your family. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, 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 the key in what you're talking about is us being intentional mm -hmm. about how we use our resources. We have the resources. Mm -hmm. We spend our money. It just doesn't get spent in our community. Yeah. No, that's the, the, very true. The, so we, so the, my question is, when we talk about these black financial institutions across the country, how do we identify them? How do we access them? How do we, what can we do to uh, facilitate the type of approach that you just described? Sure. Um, so there, there have been the CEOs of these institutions have been working rather actively with the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. So there is actually a list of black-owned banks, um, and and I believe, and I can share it with you so that I you think can there put is it like on. twenty-eight of thirty-eight of um, them or something of yeah. that nature. But and, and but a great deal of them right now are um, they were it was twenty-six. And then the increase to the 38 is that One United has opened online banking throughout the countryside. Um, so they're in a lot of the southern states now. They at one point were just here. Their home base is in New York because that's where the owners are. Uh, but they, they did a mass um, uh, just right around the recession to expand that to online banking. So they're one of the online bankers. Yeah, and so I, they're – go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I think – when I talk to people about it, very few actually know how many there are, yeah. Yeah. and and that they, that they exist. And um, when I say where they are, people will say, "Well, I have family there." I, I don't know if they even know there is one. So that some of that is just knowledge. And yeah, so um, here's the map. 
you do, are you pulling it up? So that uh-huh. 26 that you're talking about, are they in, in uh, um, California, Southern California? Where are they? Uh, they are, well, let's see. Throughout One United the is the green, so they are. Oh, it's throughout the country. It's throughout yeah. the country. Oh, okay. And then you have your credit unions. And at one point, the churches were, uh, I want to say that was back in the 75, the 70s and 80s, because I was at Fame at the time. They were even talking about our own credit unions. So mm-hmm. I know Sheree Franklin has talked about credit unions because that's some of the things they got to do for the, the cannabis because they can't put their money in federal banks. So they're actually talking about credit unions. So for a while, there was a big push on credit unions. But, um, but now, uh, but basically these dots represent and I think I can find another one that represent the banks across. But we only have uh, one United and Broadway Federal. Yeah, Cal- that's it. California, yeah, and, California is. and then. But, but that's this historically yeah. where our populations were yeah. in large urban centers. You see them in the South and the Northeast because that was where we had. Um, but yeah, so, so knowing go- who they are and and going out of our way to find them and to use them. I think going back to Mr. Larson's question about how can we begin this conversation is an entity like yours, the Urban League, if you can do an invitational meeting, invite most of these guys to a meeting, a session, and discuss how we can establish partnership with them, them. would be a good start. That would be a good start. And then talk about how we can prepare the entrepreneurs on our side for what they're looking for, bring that merger together. And we want long-term relationship. We don't just want a transactional business. We're looking for contractional business here. So that, to me, is a good way we can get started on that. I, I agree with that. I mean, basically, we need kind of a, 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 a constitutional congress, if you will, mm-hmm. to to uh, sit down and, and, again, be intentional about what it is we want to yes. do. Uh, you know, going back to uh, uh, you, when you introduced us uh, it, at the um, in this session, you said two lawyers. I want to make it clear: I'm a retired. You're, you're t- <laughs> Sorry, but guys, there's no retired. such thing. <laughs> there's no such yeah, right. thing. It's always in the DNA, right? <laughs> All yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, we're human. You retired. <laughs> but, but back, but back when I was practicing, we never walked into a meeting without having a plan. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. So, so uh, I I agree that we need to have this meeting, but we need to have a plan. A plan. Going right, right. right. And so right. this is what needs to be done, and mm-hmm. we can talk about how to do it. Right. We can talk about whether you want to be in or not, mm-hmm. but this is going to be done, yeah. uh, and there's going to be a core group of people who have already agreed to do it, yes. and it's it, 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 we've got to have a long-term strategy for this. Um, you know, the, 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 the major gains that we have made uh, in the civil rights area legally and, 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 and marching is always, have always been done with a core group of strong, uh, intelligent uh, folks who look like us around the table uh, saying, here's how this is going to work. Here's mm-hmm. how this is going to run. Mm-hmm. And, and gathering up um, uh, allies to, to, to help us move it forward. And that's what we've got to do. So I would modify your, your, your suggestion mm-hmm. with the fact that we've got to get a, a core group of people who yeah. are going to sit down w- with the knowledge of how the financial services industry works mm-hmm. and looking at somebody who was general counsel of a bank on the East Coast. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, <laughs> 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 and, and come up with a strategy that, 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 that we can execute on. Right. Yeah. And I know Crystal was involved in um, a financial – uh, I want to say conference, phenomena, whatever, with uh, the Milken Group. Yeah, the Milken Institute. And you guys sat down and you were trying to come together and put a, a system and a process together. We had the SBA in there. We had the Milken and all of that. Something similar to that. Yeah. And since you've already been down that road, maybe you can change, you can share some strategies that you guys use in that and and I don't know what the outcome was. Well, actually, they're white. It was a white paper created, and I can for I can uh, 
provide you guys with that. So it was so a study. It was a study. It was a two-year initiative that was implemented in Los Angeles and in Baltimore, where the bulk of African Americans um, entrepreneurs kind of reside. And and we did it in conjunction with the SBA and with Victor Parker. And uh, so we broke up and he called in all of the um, CBOs and we talked about the challenges and the, and the problems. And then we actually created solutions. But then their role was, okay, now you guys need to activate. And so I think out of that came the incubator that uh, Quentin has. That was one of them because we talked about technical TA support. Uh, but there's there's more to it than just TA support. Uh, but that's kind of what they took away from it. So I can share the white papers with you. Uh, they're now working on work. There's a new initiative and it's on workforce. But there's an organization that I met in, and in, um, his name is Willie, the guy's name is Willie Barney, and they're out of Omaha, Nebraska. And they have created a, it's called Empower Omaha, and they took all of their silos and all of the different clusters from finance to health to insure, uh, to children to education, and they put them all in a working hier hierarchy. And it's, they're like orbiting around each other. And so he's been doing this for the last 10 years. And so now they have a prototype of it. And they're ready to go around the country and helping everybody do the same thing that have that kind of environment. So out of that environment, they actually, I can tell you what their missions initiatives were. They um, um, did a 360 and they focused on seven seven different areas, and I think that was on, let me see if I can find a, <clears throat> the, it was health, it was the arts, and, and, and let me give you the mission of the network. Um, and it, when I first heard about it, I was at the Power Network Conference, George Frazier, and so their goal was to um, engage and educate and empower, but making sure that everybody wasn't working alone. So everyone in the business community, they needed to all come together and work together. All of the community-based organizations all come together to work together. And then um, the <clears throat> um, health and education. So they had each group, and now they're all working within the, it's like a, it's like a universe, actually, <laughs> and they're working. So he is open to coming and sitting down with other organizations or other cities and making that and helping us redo what, do what they did. So they now have, for their children, they increased their graduation rate up to almost like 95%. So everyone from that 10-year period that they're working on going to college, now they are employed. I think at the time when I first met him, the only thing at that time they didn't own was the hospital, and now they own the hospital. And in, even at the time that they started, uh, they had people from the outside saying, we want to come in and help white people, you know, other, the other nasty. And he's like, no, we have to do this ourselves first. And we have to build, yeah, it, it's a seven-step program that they have. And we have to do this. We, we can't have outside help because what happens is then we, we lose our own initiative to do what we're supposed to do, right? So the seven-step seven empowerment program. And I've spoken to him. And so theirs was employment and entrepreneurship. And that was sustainable living wage work. Everyone wants a job. Everybody gets a job and then a career and successful business. And then the next one was education and youth development. And to make sure that the graduation rate and the kids graduating had marketable skills and they were prepared for post-secondary uh, educa uh, secondary education, sustainable neighborhoods. So they had a whole zone where they built and, and bought everything and education programs and for the school, healthy wise, faith, help, hope and community engagement and violence intervention and prevention, health and family services. And finally, arts, culture, history and media and communications. So this gentleman that you're talking about, where is he from? Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, his name is Willie Barney. So we'd have to invite him here and pay his airfare and hotel and all that good stuff. Yeah. But if we got a group of people to do that, he would come out to all our, you know, 
we pull all our community-based organizations and everybody else that wanted to get on board, and he would sit down and at least lay out the plan and how they executed it. I think we need to do something because we constantly rely on the dominant culture to help us, and it's not happening. I mean, and if we do get something, we're going to get a little scrap. And that scrap is not enough to sustain us. We need sustainability. So we got to build our system, our infrastructure, make it work for us. And I don't like throwing out the names of groups and all of that, but I'm just going to do it now. <laughs> the Asians, you see how they work together? Yeah, that's what I was saying. They don't go to anyone else. They do it themselves. Mm -hmm. They've got their banks, you know, Asian banks and all, and and investors and uh, you know you have other groups that do that we're the only groups that are not, and even the, the Jewish community there's, yeah, a, there's a book called yeah. the, the Jewish principle yeah. of yeah. what's it called the Jewish principle right. and they actually operate from the same They've seven point that. plan and, <laughs> and they did it out of the the uh, whatever happened in, in um, Auschwitz yeah the, ha you the, the Holocaust saying? so they yeah. created they it. did it out of that mm -hmm. And we are the only ones, you know, we're still here waiting for that 40 acre and a mule and we're not going to get it. So we got to create our own mule, you know, raise some mules mm -hmm. and, and create the lands. You see what I mean? We got to do it. I think Michael really did touch on it, though, when he talked about the studies that have come out and said how long a, a dollar stays. in Yes. A yeah. Yes. And I'm. I am a part of a network, uh, African-American attorney network on Facebook, where we try to make sure that we're getting and finding referrals within our community around the country. Mm -hmm. Started by a gentleman who's a, a, a high-powered attorney and just really brilliant and couldn't figure out why nobody had done it on Facebook before to use social media just for us to put out those referrals. Mm -hmm. I think <clears throat> we do. There was a great Netflix special, the... Um, Triggering with, with, yeah, uh, yeah. with Killer Mike. Where, he, just where he tried, and I think I'm often having conversations with people about who their dentist is, who their doctors mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. even if they are at majority institutions, yeah. um, what you find is they can be at a majority institution and still languish because they're not the first choice for the majority mm -hmm. patient, but mm -hmm. they should be ours. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think there there is still a mentality, which, again, we can talk about where it comes from. It is a long s slave narrative mm -hmm. about how we've been taught to distrust each other. Mm -hmm. and, um, but but you know, and it's the the um, psychology of low expectations yeah. that we mm -hmm. have for ourselves when we have for each yeah. other. But we've got to move past right. it. Yeah, yeah. And um, businesses don't always offer you the best customer service. No. That's every business. <laughs> no. Sometimes businesses have problems on the yeah. days you walk in, and that's yeah. no reason not for us not to patronize one another right. and for us not to work together. But I agree with what Michael said about a plan. Mm -hmm. And even when we're talking about doing things ourselves within our own community, we do have allies. And often we don't get the most out of our alliances because we don't go as a community mm -hmm. with these bigger picture, what is this, seven-step Omaha empowerment mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where we're telling them um, you're not just going to give us a little bit of money we've we have rallied our community and we've come together and figured out what our needs are mm -hmm. and where we're going to put it to use and now we expect your alliance yeah. to come meet us because yeah. we know our history in this country and and we've already we've already paid that mm -hmm. debt mm -hmm. and so I I agree the relationships are key and People have asked me about the steps I've taken in my career and where I've been and what I've done. And it has always been important to me to be in a room because so many opportunities, relationships, access to capital come just by being in a room. Mm -hmm. The number of times I have been in a room where somebody says, well, why exactly are we doing this Xfinity marketing for black people? And I've been like, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was supposed to be here today yeah. to remind you mm -hmm. that this is not a question you get to ask. That's right. Today, mm -hmm. we have paid this forward right. mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. And in corporate America, if we are not there constantly mm -hmm. reminding people mm -hmm. that there is a debt to be paid, <clears throat> that we are a valuable source and community in this country, sometimes that gets lost mm -hmm. on people mm -hmm. because we, we see it from our own perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> it's about building the relationships, but it's also about making sure our pipeline says to our young people, to our old people, to everybody, go get where you need to get and be okay being the only one in the right, room right. and be okay mm -hmm. standing up for something mm -hmm. and be okay trying to navigate those relationships and take what you learn back mm -hmm. to our community mm -hmm. because we 
have been divorced for so long from the the whole process of something. They kept us down here, mm -hmm. and we didn't see that whole process, which is why workforce readiness is also something that I really appreciate, because I right. think we need to get into places and see what people do and how mm -hmm. businesses run mm -hmm. and what's mm -hmm. successful and see models of leadership and other things. Um, because one thing about this Empower Omaha concept is we see the successes of big tech companies mm -hmm. like Uber and Facebook, and maybe Facebook's not a good example, but we see that, and we think it was just three founders sitting in a room, mm -hmm. but when you go and actually read their story, you mm -hmm. realize they sat in a room, and then they got introduced to this CEO, and mm -hmm. then they got invited to attend this think tank at this university, and they did a boot camp on entrepreneurship, and then they did a small business boot camp, and then they got flown to meet the CEO of the similar company, and their, their private equity investors then got them access to meeting here and flying there and so we see that and think oh it was just them in a room but it really was an incubation process that was mm -hmm. a whole lot of things that came together mm -hmm. that prepared those three people sitting in a room who don't know any more than we do mm -hmm. aren't any smarter than we are aren't any more capable but gave them the tools they needed to level up that business and so that's what I see this as being about mm -hmm. like let's, I, let's find our people with good ideas. Yeah, I believe that's what Michael was saying about yeah. the relationship. Absolutely, and, you know, and that, that you said it perfect. Yeah, that was perfect, perfect. and that's yeah. what we need to do. And actually, we live in a technology world mm -hmm. today, so we actually could have a telecommunication yeah. conference yeah. with yeah. Willie Barney and yeah. his group yeah. at least to lay the groundwork yeah. to have the conversation. That's true. In, in, invite those of like-minded and synergy to sit down and they cover each of those seven points and tell you how the, the, what the ground floor was yeah. and how they moved through for the last 11 years in order to do that. So it does appear like they've been doing this Rebuilding the Village conference. Um, they, they're having it on, on, on February 11th. 11th. Right, but <laughs> it's like right now. Yeah. But we could actually have the conversation. I've actually already had an initial conversation with him when I was at the PNC conference last year. And I told him that I was going to come back home and I was going to talk to people. And I've talked to a couple of people. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Crystal. But uh, we really need not just talk. <laughs> can, you, can you reach out to him? I can. And let's organize a conference. And if Michael is available and Sean, we can do this. I'm, I'm all for it. Absolutely. So you guys tell Absolutely. me what you guys want to do. And I will give him a call next week. And let's see what we can yeah. get some dates and because we'll reach out. And then I, I guess we need just to sit down and yeah. say, who do we want to invite right. to this meeting? Now, Michael, um, a number of years ago, um, Operation Hope actually did it. And Leo knows how it works because Leo was the one that put it together. And I've actually had this conversation with Leo. Um, uh, they reached out to every, all the CBOs. And all the bankers and we all, that look like us. And we all sat down and we had a conversation. And then, um, and, and so John Bryan was putting together something for something he was doing in Atlanta and he was presenting it. But Leo knows how, it, how they put that together. And, and the number of people who he, who was invited to sit down and have this conversation. And we were having, and we were getting to solutions but then we never went any further. But because I, I didn't think we didn't really have a game plan, right? We didn't have a, we need a, we need something that's already out there. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel because that seems so daunting when we say, okay, where do we start from square one? But if there, my thing is, if there's somebody already got a plan and is already successful and it's been working for 10 years, why don't we adopt that? Why <laughs> reinvent the wheel? Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, Michael, um, so let's say a session like this is established. And you mentioned earlier that it's good to know what the game plan is going into sessions and meetings and all that. What do you think our game plan could be for a meeting like this? Um, I think we have to do it in, in a way that's different than the way we've done it before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, quite frankly, what I'm hearing us talk about now is what we've done before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We sit down, we have a conversation, we map something out, we say, oh, this would work, and how do we do this? And we look around the table and we wait for somebody to write the first check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're still sitting around waiting for somebody to write the first check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I will say this is changing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would point to the Black Economic Alliance. Mm. which is 
uh, a a PAC that has uh, it started, I think, uh, late last year. It's an African American PAC that is uh, where uh, people of uh, who who have the the resources wrote the check. Mm. And there is money in the pot to have an influence on the, uh, the, 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 the politics of this country in a significant way. But it starts with people making the commitment. If you don't make the commitment, you don't get a seat at the table. Right. Uh, and then once you have that, now you move on. And this is not a new, new concept. This is right. – I'm borrowing it mm-hmm. from – the Jewish tradition. Mm-hmm. You, where's your check? I need it now. Yeah, there you and go. And if you don't have, if you're not putting in the check, you don't have a comp, you don't have a say mm-hmm. in how this thing is, is is running. Now, I'm not suggesting that um, we have to limit this to uh, our, our, our brothers and sisters in the financial services industry who have all of that money, but we have to meet people where they are. Mm-hmm. And once you have that commitment, however small, as long as it's significant to that person, that person is now invested. Mm-hmm. And once you have someone invested in this, this, uh, this, what we're, whatever we're going to put together, now people are paying attention. And and the next, the next step, which is the step that, that that we we don't take, we've had fits and starts in this idea for a long time. Now, mind you, I am not ignoring the fact that we were so far ahead when we had Black Wall Street in Oklahoma oh, and yeah, it was sure. destroyed. Now, yeah. And understand, there's no question about it. If we do this and we do this right, they're gonna come back we again. will be attacked because yeah. they are afraid oh, yeah. of yeah. us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're at that place right oh, now. Yeah. They're so terrified right now that they're using whatever guerrilla tactics they really can because they're afraid that, and I think I mentioned to Sean, and, and, and it makes sense to me, if I was sitting in their shoes, doing, having done what they've done, then they're probably going, wow, why haven't they attacked us? I'm waiting for them to attack us, right? Because mm-hmm. that would be the human reaction to what's going on. The more they suppress, at some point you're going to back them into a corner and they're going to come out and they're going to just to tear to the wind and say, okay, we're done with this. And we're almost there. There, those are those little episodes that are happening, and now that racism is out frontal, it, it's, it's like being in George Wallace territory right now, and it's across the country. I, w- I would suggest to you that it never went never away. Way. It didn't. It's always been <laughs> but there. But it's been suppressed. But they've It been hasn't getting... even been suppressed. We just didn't see it. Ah, okay. It's, it's there, it's, and, and, and make no mistake that it, it is prevalent and... and now they feel comfortable saying it out loud, mm-hmm. but they were saying it when we weren't in the room. Oh yeah. So it it has yeah because they're too comfortable saying it now oh, for it not to have been conversations right. already being had. Ex- exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So we need to be very intentional about what we're going to do, and we have to we we have to put some skin in the game to move this thing forward. And 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 we can do it. We we are the most resilient people on the planet. We are the strongest people on the planet. And it has taken all of their efforts to try to keep us down. And so so once once we get back on our feet, and we are in the process of doing so, and that's that's a function of us working together as opposed to working alone. Yes. Um, the the we are we are a powerful force, as you guys mentioned in the other section session. We are the most creative people on the planet. Mm-hmm. You can't go anywhere in the planet without seeing some, some, some vestige of Black American culture, mm-hmm. and and we are not the ones spreading it. Right. <laughs> so they are coming here, taking what we have, yeah. and 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 reproducing it. Mm-hmm. We are the we're the smartest people on the planet, and they know that the only way to to defeat us is with force. And incarceration, uh, and and literally killing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. That 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 is the only way to 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 keep us down. So we need to understand how powerful we are. We do not understand our own strength. Mm-mm. We so, do not understand our own I strength. I think um, building that into um, strategy, going in with a strategy, is also recognizing 
that they're going to come after us too. Oh yeah, we know that. And put a strategy to counteract that because it's going to happen. You know, any successful entrepreneur ideas, invention, you always have knockoffs. You always have, you know, someone trying to emulate you or, or suppress you. Like they call them the big box. The big box guys try to step on you. And if they can't step on you, then they try to bring, first they try to buy you out. Acquisition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't happen, then they try to partner with you. Mm -hmm. And when they partner, then they try to suppress you while you're a partner. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So yeah. that's part of our strategy here where we're, we want to put that strategy going into this and anticipate that those things mm -hmm. are going to happen so our strategy can you know, circumvent those things. And I think the, the Asian is absolutely right, though. You you have to use a stealth type of... Mission. Oh, yeah, you got to be stealth. Because you, you got to build the foundation yeah. strong enough so you that while you're stealth. stealthily doing it, yeah. um, then and by the time they do get to you, mm -hmm. and if your links are strong... You've got your reinforcements. Then you, 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 you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's harder to... Imp, um, break through a, yeah. a strong link, but it will all of us fragment, which was the reason the colonizers did that in the first yeah. place, was to make sure that there was always weak links. This right. is definitely a great discussion. I just wanted to piggyback on your your uh, analogy to the, the, the Asian strategy because part of it is having a long-term vision. Yeah. Yes, you got to have yeah. a long-term, like the stock, like you're investing, an investment. Right. So you're, we're, we're not doing it for us. We're doing it for our gener our children below us. Yeah. That's why I work so hard with you know the biz camp and everything because it's not about us. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about our children. Mm -hmm. But right now I look at my nephews and they're coming out of school with loans and that they, they can't uh, leave home. They uh, literally cannot leave home right. because they can't afford to leave home. They can't leave home uh, and the parents can't stop working because yeah. they're paying a the mortgage. Right. You're paying so the mortgage. Every, everybody everybody's locked down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the fact of the matter is we are where we are because we didn't get that head start. Mm -hmm. Every generation mm -hmm. starts over. Right. You guys have talked about this yeah. so many times. Yeah. You understand it. Your mm -hmm. audience understands mm -hmm. it. We have to start the next generation with a head start. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Legacy. We have to create yes. the legacy. Interge the intergenerational transfer of wealth has mm -hmm. got to be full, first and foremost on our minds. I think so. So, Chris, so what's our next move on this? Uh, I reach out to Mr. I yeah you guys I'll steps. call him and find out what dates and then we put together some dates and okay. Michael you're sitting at the table Sean you're sitting at the table let's yeah. get some people that we know gonna make a move <laughs> and okay. not just talk about it okay. and let's or, make it happen or some of the other people that we can get. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to add, his event is coming up. So yeah. to the extent that he will let us dial in to some portion of that, or yeah, I will. You know, I will ask that question. Yeah, I will. Be great. Um, I will. I'll ask all those questions. Yeah, because they have that event coming up on February 11th, and then and then and, and, um, and they're not even a big group. They're a small little group mm -hmm. of people that have just. But so you couldn't of, tell looking at this. You couldn't tell. No. Yeah. yeah. You when you look at this, this is literally. I think it pop that's their whole group. See, I do agree with the <laughs> stealth idea. I've been saying stealth for the longest time. You know, when they do see you <laughs> is when you're super prominent and there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do. Right. About. Yes, a small group of dedicated people exactly. do wonders. Oh, we yes. Do wonders. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And if we care about our community, we care about our children, we care, we care about us as black people, then that's the, the, the record is right there. None of the nonsense, none of the drama. We just got one focus and one focus only that we're leaving something better for the children that are not even here yet. Right, right. So we we're at the to. top of the hour, and uh, this time went by so quickly. I know. We had two great guests. Yes, this is phenomenal. A great conversation. Um, I, um, so our action items, I'll make a phone call on Monday. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Yes. And actually, this Monday, has to happen. Yeah, well, actually, Monday will be in a conference, but <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. leave a message for somebody, but I have their, yes. their, their information, yeah, so I'll make a phone happen. call. And I think that's the case, and then we'll go from there. So we want to thank our very special guest. Do, do both of you have some final parting words you want to share with our audience? 
I just want to thank you for inviting me. This has been wonderful. This type of conversation is the one that we need to have more and more, and we need to follow it up with action. And I yes. love the fact that yes. we fo- we have our action plans together. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome, Definitely. Sean. I, I just wanted to share something that always heartens me. It's a quote from Martin Luther King, Jr., and it says, Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step towards the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle the tireless exertions and passionate concerns of dedicated individuals. And <clears throat> it, it feels daunting at times, mm-hmm. but, but it, it's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's our, our liberty, our economic advancement, <clears throat> the eradication of poverty and yeah. um, economic in, instability yes. are, are going to take every day, mm-hmm. and we should be proud of those efforts every yes. day. Thank okay. you so Fantastic. much. Fantastic. This has been wonderful. It's been fantastic. Um, you yeah, got but, anything coming up? Well, I have a workshop at the Vermont Slauson Economic Development Center every Tuesday from 5.30 to 9, 9 p.m. And uh, this is at 1130 West Slauson Avenue, Los Angeles. Uh, the class that's coming up this Tuesday is uh, procurement and uh, finding contract opportunities. This past Tuesday we had certifications. This time we've had procurement, so it's going to be great. Okay, and I'm doing the digital marketing classes, helping our uh, business owners create multiple streams of income, um, any way that they can bring in more money other than what they're doing from their businesses, which, you know, sometimes just doesn't work, and so I'm doing that. I'm speaking at the annual Women's the uh, Coalition of 100 Black Women of the Los Angeles Chapter tomorrow All right. uh, for the fourth annual Women's Entrepreneurial Empowerment Afternoon Tea. Very good. So I'm speaking on entrepreneurship, unlocking the entrepreneurial spirit, yes. and then on, that's tomorrow the 9th, and then on the, the following week, which is the 16th. I'm speaking at Jefferson High mm. uh, to k- young kids, uh, bet- uh, high schoolers, on entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And I'll be talking about the biz camp. Mm-hmm. And then we're actually launching, We starting the 15th, we're doing a biz camp. It's actually with the YEC. And we're selecting nine kids to represent the Los Angeles Urban League. And we're uh, these kids are going to compete. They're going to create a joint project. And they're going to compete for a $5,000 um, uh, prize, and that's being sponsored by Union Bank and the YEC. So and I'm we also want to let you, we also want to let you all know that the winner of that particip- that, that uh, competition mm-hmm. will be on our show as a guest. Yes, for sure. Right after. And then we're okay. gearing up for our 2019 biz camp and yes. summer camp that we do in the summer in June and July. So Excellent. we're gearing up with that and putting the plan together. And we will be educating 50 students, uh, young people between the ages of 14 and 18. It's beautiful. So that's beautiful. what we're Excellent. doing. Excellent. Beautiful. All righty, guys. It's been a fantastic uh, show again. Um, I will provide you both with the clip from the show. So you can put it on your website, so wherever you want to do with do it. Do you want to real quickly give a, a phone number, an yeah. address, location, how people can get a hold of you? Um, I can be reached. I'll give you my personal email, michael.lawson at laul.org. Uh, We're at 4401 Crenshaw Boulevard, Suite 201. Excellent. And I'm Sean Ray White at gmail.com. Excellent. All righty, guys. So enjoy your Black History uh, Week activities and we will be back next week we will i will have gone through a whole lot of black uh, black history uh, <laughs> events next week it's like on and kicking now uh the pan-african film fest is in place starting um uh, this week i think and so we'll be there and there's a bunch of stuff going on so you guys enjoy share on our facebook page the business zone with crystal and gilbert where you're going and we'll see you next week and have as, a great as week. you know the business zone is on every friday from three to five MarsMediaLive.com, and we look forward to having you. We're out. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you next week. As a small biz grow, I so we roll. Using procurement, program, and control. As a small biz grow, I so we grow. Using procurement, program, and control. Yeah, I'm a business man. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. 
I'm a business man, yes I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business man, yes I'm an entrepreneur. Who yeah here? Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Got my capability statement, yes, I'm ready to go. Got my balance sheet, my PL, and my statement of cash flow. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Got my capability segment, yes, I'm ready to go. Got my